This is Solve Crimes. probably remember hearing lectures from adults and watching the evening news about how you have to be careful on Halloween. Have your parents check your candy for razor blades, nails, and poison. Not sure how they check for poison, but that's what they said. There's actually one man who can almost single-handedly take the blame for all that fear across the country every Halloween. Ronald Clark O'Brien, the man they called Candyman. Some, even now, called him the man who killed Halloween. That may sound harsh, but it is well deserved. In 1974, from the Houston suburb of Deer Park, Texas, Ronald O'Brien planned and carried out the murder of his eight-year-old son, Timothy, by poisoning his Halloween candy on Halloween night after Timothy and his five-year-old sister, Elizabeth, had a fun night trick-or-treating in nearby Pasadena, Texas with some neighbors. O'Brien offered his son one candy from his trick-or-treat bag before bed, a pixie sticks. Timothy ripped open the straw and happily guzzled the contents. He complained immediately that the normally sugary candy tasted bitter. His dad gave him some Kool-Aid to wash it down. Within moments, Timothy was complaining of severe stomach pain. He ran to the bathroom where he began vomiting and convulsing. Timothy died on the way to the hospital. This naturally caused a panic in the Pasadena and Deer Park communities. Scared parents were dropping off pounds of candy at the local police stations, asking them to check the candy for poison. It quickly became a nationwide story. O'Brien wasn't suspected at first by police, but O'Brien had tried to take the focus away from himself by claiming that he had gotten the poisonous candies from one house. Yes, he had given the poisoned pixie sticks to his son, his daughter, and two neighbor children. Turns out that the occupants of the house O'Brien blamed weren't home on Halloween, and they had a solid alibi, which then put the spotlight on Ronald O'Brien. After police analyzed the pixie sticks, they discovered that each of the straws of candy had enough potassium cyanide to kill two grown adults. It turns out that Ronald O'Brien had some money trouble. In fact, he was about to lose the family home. Earlier that year, in January of 1974, Ronald O'Brien took out a $10,000 life insurance policy on both his son and his daughter. He took out additional $20,000 policies on each child in September, and then yet another pair of $20,000 policies just days before Halloween. Ronald never told his wife about the policies, nor about his plan to collect on those policies. A chemist acquaintance of Ronald's told police that the year before Timothy's murder, Ronald had asked him about cyanide and about how much would make it fatal. A cashier at a chemical store also told police that Ronald had purchased five pounds of cyanide just before Halloween. On June 3, 1975, it took the jury in Houston 46 minutes to find Ronald O'Brien guilty of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder. It took the jury only 71 minutes to sentence him to death. O'Brien maintained his innocence. 
Shortly after midnight on March 31, 1984, Ronald Clark O'Brien was put to death by lethal injection at Texas State Penitentiary at Huntsville. Both death penalty opposition and supporters of O'Brien's execution were outside the prison. When an announcement was made that O'Brien had died, a group of people shouted, trick or treat, and threw candy into the crowd. Most of today's testimony came from Jimmy Bates, a close friend of the O'Brien family. Bates said that before Halloween, O'Brien asked if he could bring his children over to trick-or-treat with the Bates children on Halloween night. Both families ate dinner together, and then the fathers took the children trick-or-treating. Bates said O'Brien went to one house where no one appeared to be home, and after the children had scampered ahead to the next house, O'Brien came off the front porch carrying the pixie sticks. He gave the pixie sticks to the children and then later took them back and said he wanted to stop at his car for a moment. Bates said when O'Brien came back into the Bates house, he returned the pixie sticks to the children. Later that night, Timothy O'Brien died from eating a poisoned pixie stick. It was Halloween night, 1998, in Bronx, New York. Twenty-one-year-old computer programmer at Morgan Stanley, Carl Jackson Jr., was driving his girlfriend Darlene and her nine-year-old son Clyde to drop Clyde off with a babysitter. The two had just picked the boy up from a children's Halloween party, and after dropping him off, they were looking to have a fun Halloween night for themselves. Carl was a Bronx native. He attended Our Savior Lutheran School, and was the son of Gloria Jackson, a nurse, and Carl Jackson Sr., a postal worker. Traditionally, Halloween isn't just going door to door to collect candy. Remember, trick or treat starts with the word trick. Tricks have consisted of pranks such as toilet paper in a house, ringing someone's doorbell and running away, also known as ding dong ditch. Most tricks were fairly harmless. This particular Halloween night, a group of young men decided to throw a raw egg at Jackson's car, supposedly as a prank. No doubt running on pure adrenaline, Jackson jumped out of the car and confronted the young men. Carl must have seen something in their demeanor, or maybe he saw weapons. He got back into his car and drove off. One or more of the egg-throwing teens jumped into a car and took chase. As traffic stopped a few blocks away, one of the young men ran up to Jackson's window and placed a bullet through his head. Carl Jackson Jr. died instantly. Every Halloween on the anniversary of Carl Jackson Jr.'s death, his family gathers at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx. They write messages to him on painted stones and they leave them at his grave. 17-year-old Curtis Sterling was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon. He was convicted and sentenced to 20 years in prison. Every October, while serving his sentence, Sterling received a Halloween card in the mail. The cards always read, I'm glad you're still there. Those cards were from Gloria, Carl Jackson Jr.'s mother.
Thanks so much for watching. One thing that makes this channel a bit different is that we are actually investigating and making every effort to solve cold case crimes for victims' families in between episodes like this one. So when we say that liking our videos, subscribing, and sharing helps, it truly does. It helps us get our cold cases in front of more people and hopefully to get some closure and even justice for the families of these victims. We really do appreciate you liking this video and subscribing. Be sure to click the bell to be alerted when new episodes are uploaded. Feel free to comment, ask questions, or provide information you may have for us. Until next time, this is Solve Crimes.